Hello, welcome to Flory Models Kit Review Time. Today we've got Eddard's reboxing of the fantastic Trumpeter MiG-23 family of jets. Now, we know technically they're not the best kits uh, out there, but definitely what um, Eddard are trying to take the best in scale and all the rest of it. So the MiG-23 kit actually isn't a bad one. It's got a few issues and a few fit things and stuff like that. We've looked at detailed in those kit reviews before, but I thought we'd have a look to see exactly what we get in here and what makes these kits so special. And definitely they tend to be my go-to kits because these are gonna have all the bits you need in any build or certainly the stuff that I would use. So as you can see, first thing that grabs you is the markings. And this is what Eddard is all about. They find and do some fantastic research on the best types of uh, markings you can get out there. So as you can see, we've got these fantastic ones on here. And looking on the side of the box, you can see all the others. Uh, and they are really, really nice ones down in there, as you can see. So quick run round on the box down on here. You can see your kit number for this one is 11120. And then down on here, some of the other markings you get. So you actually get a plethora of markings. So without further ado, let's get in here. Now, it weighs a ton. That's because, to be honest, this bit we've seen before, this bit we've seen before, this is what this is all about. So down in here, we've got some resin, which we'll look at in a moment. We've got some color photo etch. So we've got some harnesses. Uh, looks like removed before flight tags, things like that. We've got the color cockpit set and a little bit for exterior stuff. We've got a mask set, which is die cut. We get this which is, looks absolutely fantastic. We get a fantastic set of instructions, as you can see, and then chucked down in here, we've got all these markings. So again, I haven't looked in here, so this is literally how it's come, but as you can see, we've got some beautiful stuff. Look at the stencil data on that. <laughs> okay, we'll look at those properly in a moment. Let's just pop that down there. Okay, so as always, we'll start with the instructions and then we'll go through absolutely everything. So because it is the MiG-23 family, obviously you get the ground attack version with the chiseled front on it. Uh, this is the MF or the ML, which has got the uh, aircraft version or the sort of air superiority version, which has got the bigger radar at the front. So there is gonna be some differences running through the kit. So as you can see, looking through, we got some fantastic set of instructions, really nice and easy to follow. Remember, if it's got any red on it and things like that, it basically means sand it off and replace it with the photo etch set. So full harness set, various details, as you can imagine, down here in our resin ejector seat that we've got down in here. Then obviously we're gonna replace all the uh, instruments with the color photo etch set, which makes it fantastic, and with the side walls, and then putting the cockpit area together. Then we're straight off around with all the other side walls going in there and then putting in the intakes, the various things of the wheel wells, as you might imagine, down in here. The nozzle down the back end as well, it is using the actual kit parts. It isn't a resin one uh, that I thought it might do. Uh, so that one's going down there as well. They're not actually using resin wheel wells as well because those are available for this kit as well. They're just going with uh, the kit ones, which to be honest, they're not too bad. Okay, the all important swing wing system. So it is the old fashioned sort of geared way of doing it. Those ones going down there, we've got the nose wheel and then all the plates and the various things like the speed brakes if you want them open or closed down on there. Intakes being fitted down on there. And then the nice thing about this kit, we don't have a seam light. It's this nice big plate's gonna drop down and then most of this is hidden out of the way once you've got that all important wheel well section put in there. Then we're going off to the canopy, so lots of different things going on down in here. So we've got some nice instrumentation parts going for the actual instrument uh, combing over the top, then onto the canopies and down on for the actual windscreen itself. Then we've actually got the tailplanes with the various aerials being put it on, and then obviously you've got the tail and the tailplanes being fitted onto this one. The gear itself, quite complex how it goes together uh, because it has got that sort of kneeling down look to it. So those being fitted on there, and again, more speed brakes being fitted to the underside, doors, things like that. Aerials all being fitted on, and then obviously imagine lots of those, and then gear, gun pods, various things, if you're gonna have them on the bottom, being fitted down in there. Weapon set, so we've got the fuel tanks, uh, we've got the 800 liter uh, fuel tanks fitted, fitted down there. A couple of R60s, okay, and then obviously we've got the other ones down in here, the R13s, uh, okay, and the R23s, the uh, medium range missiles being fitted down onto there. Showing you exactly where you're gonna be putting all more important uh, details such as masks uh, and things like that for the actual canopy and the wheels. All right, color call outs, uh, a little bit down in here. Quite nice to see we're getting good conversion charts down in here as well. So we've got mission models I see are being listed down on here. So we've got Mr. Color and we've got the Acritis lines. We've got the metal ones down in there as well. 
yeah, I missed the module. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, down in here as well, we've got obviously all the other colour callouts down in there. All right. Then we've got the actual scheme. And we'll just have a quick flick through them because they are quite nice. But you see, we've got the standard sort of greys. We've got the sort of um, Cold War uh, colours down in there. So as you say, we've got the Czech ones down in here, moving right the way through. Then we've got some of these specialist ones down in here. So this Dragon one is absolutely fantastic. Onto the back here, uh, or the Devil one. Very nice, stunning markings on this. That sort of standard sort of European uh, three-tone right the way over these as you can imagine going through a couple of the actual tiger meat markings on these shark mouth one on there obviously gets my vote more tiger meat things as you can imagine right the way through and then speaking of which there it is that's the beauty that's the real nice one that fantastic tiger meat squadron from uh, 94 beautiful job on that one as you can see right the way through stencil data numerous as you might imagine on the actual weapon system luckily there isn't too many on the aircraft there's enough on here but certainly it's enough to liven up the actual paint scheme as you can see so this is different versions of it so you've got a b uh, an E and then you got the C and D stencil data it is slightly different on them and the different so it's different ones on here so it's overhaul markings on there as well as the standards that's quite nice go for the overhaul one it hasn't got hundreds on there unlike the factory fresh version again very nice way of putting that out okay let's have a quick look at the decals the decals themselves as you can see let me move these out of the way we'll go straight in on the close-up as you can see some really nice ones down on there good solid ones they are done by cartograph so you know they're going to be absolutely fantastic got the serial data down in there and all of these gorgeous markings and it's really nice that we've got multiple check markings down in there so you could do multiple ones of this particular kit which is very nice indeed okay tiger meat markings as you can see very nice large old carrier with this but it'd be almost impossible to do it as individuals but there we go very nice indeed stencil data yeah take your pick look at that it's just a monster sheet on its own but generally looking around at it as you can see good clean solid uh, registration as you'd expect okay and there we go so we also get down in here couple of little bits of resin so we've seen these during the instructions so we've got various things in here there's that seat we were talking about looking very nice down in there we've got pylons as you can see right the way through we've actually got the weapons as well so we've got those medium range missiles and the pylons and the fins that are all going to go with those we also get down in here we've got a little bit of color down on these ones and some rings uh, we've actually got the harness set for inside the cockpit as well which is the steel type very nicely printed and put on color photo etch for the cockpit again pretty much a must on these really very very nice indeed and we've got some standard sort of photo etch on the back for usual antennas and various things as you imagine some wheel hubs down in there as well die cut masks as i said really handy to do you've got those on there just like that then we've got down here now we've already basically been through these so we'll have a, another quick look okay the biggest difference is we get this extra sprue down in here like this now the reason they put this in this is eddard's own sprue added onto the trumpeter kit okay because this has got the correct weapons fit uh, an updated weapon system on it so it's nice that that's in there and not just the trump the generic horrible stuff okay so this is where we dive in amongst the plastic so this is where they are so we've got the nozzles just down the back we've already reviewed this one and i'll link the original review into this because we have done it some time ago so we'll have a flash through but it is all completely recessed details right in here as you can see on all of these so we've got the tail system really nice it's all, all individual bagged as you can literally see in these very nice indeed and actually apart from you know there's a few perhaps little issues around intakes things like that on this generally the aircraft itself is really really nice you can probably see great recess details down in there right the way through and all of these multiple multiple parts as it's coming through actually none of it is too bad at all there's your 
your fuselage set. I always say that the ground attack version with that chisel nose, it just looks horrible and you can get a replacement for it. This particular version with the round one, the ML, no problem at all. It looks pretty good to me right the way through. But again, very, very nice indeed. We've got the actual intakes. We've got the blowing doors open on those as well, which is a nice touch. The clear parts, to be honest, trust me, they're lovely as well. All right, so no problem with any of those. It's just the standard kit being put amongst it. This is an absolute beauty. So what you've got down in here is this huge book, which we'll just zip down into. Okay. And then we can have a bit of a flick through. And as you can see, we've got all these things. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, that's great, Phil. It's all in foreign. True. Uh, unfortunately, it is. I do believe that online there is a uh, English version so you can go through, but let's face it, uh, the, you're in this really for the reference photos. And that is what is absolutely beautiful on this one, right the way through. So you've got details of each actual aircraft that has been done as a decal set in here. So you can use this just for the references as you make your way through this one. It is unfortunate that obviously it is in, uh, in check and things like that really, but at the end of the day, you can go online, I do believe, and have a look for it. They used to do the second production was always in English, but I do believe that um, this isn't the case with these. But if you go online, I think you can actually do a bit of a transfer, but you can see beautiful markings and references, as you can see right the way through on this book, and that's what makes it so very nice. And you say there's that gorgeous tiger meat one from 94. Really very, very nice indeed. But again, it's more for your references than anything else, unless you do want to go and do a Google Translate with it, which good luck with that. And there we go. A lot of people have been asking me about reboxing and how it works and all the rest of it. Quick thing to this, what normally happens is, is that there's two ways it runs. Either after the kit's been released, um, you get something like Nuremberg Toy Fair, perhaps Eddard might pop along to Trumpeter and say about doing some reboxing and they'll speak to it. They'll do a deal and they will buy them just like you've seen there in the OEM version. Second way of doing it is obviously some of the manufacturers, some of the smaller ones perhaps, might approach a company like Ravel and say, look, we want to do a run of a certain kit and we want to produce so many of them, and then we, you could then have it as a rebox afterwards. This then lowers the production cost of having to do both together. So they're all done in one giant run, but there's an agreement that then perhaps, you know, uh, Ravel, say, have done an agreement with another company, have the second run of it, and then they will do it as a reboxing for them. And that way it lowers the cost for both parties involved in doing a manufacturing run and things like that. So there's a quick little bit of info for you. But there we go. That is the Eddard rebox uh, of the MiG-23. To be honest, it is on my to-do list, and I have got the wheel wells for it and all the other bits and pieces in my spares drawer behind me so I would love to make an approach at this one later on in the year and actually do one of these birds it probably might be this one even because they are gorgeous but there's a large part of me who thinks I've got another MiG down in there I could do both now because we've got both markings for it so it might be a sort of a mini super build shall we say later on in the year but really looking forward to tracking the actual great color scheme and weathering that we can do on this model. So there we go, that's Eddard's beautiful 148 scale trumpeter rebox of the MiG-23ML.